guys, Alec Pierce at the ranch. Here I am in my favorite room and the entire property, my garage. If any of you have a have a have a pond uh, uh, on your property, uh, you may be familiar with a company called Quenders. Co yeah, Quenders. K O E N D E R S. I'll get Kevin to put a um, URL on the bottom of the screen for you for Coenders. Now, Coenders does a lot of different things now. They specialize in ponds and aeration systems and so on. But originally, I think anyway, I think I'm right. Originally, their, their big deal was windmills. And they make a windmill. Now, not like my old fashioned water pumping windmill. You've seen it, my old 100 year old uh, windmill that pumps water. Uh, but they make, they make a windmill that's quick and easy to pop up, different heights, 20, 30, 40, 50 feet in their boats, and you, you can put it together very quickly, and it has a, a windmill on the top, uh, but they don't pump water with it. What they pump instead is air, and they pump air. That may sound silly, but if you have a pond, and you've been doing any research at all on your pond, particularly if you have uh, wildlife in it, uh, whether it's stuck with fish or, or turtles or whatever, wildlife, you want to keep the water as fresh as possible. And you've looked into it at all. You've Googled ponds and keeping the water fresh. You know that if you pump air into the pond, year-round actually you can do this, then the air keeps the, the bottom water and the bottom nutrients, keeps the water flowing and keeps, keeps the pond fresh. How do you get air in there? Well, you can plug a pump into the wall and pump air, but then, you know, you're paying for electricity and everything else. So this Coenders uh, company make great products, by the way. I think they're unique in the world, actually. They, and they, they make this great windmill, and it pumps air. And so it's a lightweight mill, not very expensive, uh, you know, for a sophisticated piece of machinery. And they have a very simple air pump connected to the windmill. So the windmill spins around. It's got a crank on it. The crank goes up and down. And it, makes, it pumps an air pump. Not exactly the same as a bicycle pump. Similar, you're going to see in a minute. Anyway, they do a great job. And that air pump can be connected by a long line. The, long, the line can be two, three hundred feet long if necessary. Fifty or a hundred feet is normal. But you, you can make it as long as you want. And it pumps air along that line out into your pond. And you can have the air just bubble out the end. But the, the better thing to do is get what they call a diffuser. And it goes on the end of the air line at the bottom of the water in the pond. It's the same as the diffusers. I think they're called diffusers in, in aquariums too. Airstone used to be called years ago when I had a aquarium. A little airstone. And it's a, a thing, piece of stone with a bunch of holes in it. The airline goes into it and it breaks it into a million little bubbles and bubbles up to the surface. And this stirs the bottom up and it's a really, really good deal. So check that out. Anyway, the reason I'm talking about this today is that I had a Coenders windmill for quite a while. I got rid of the windmill. I didn't need it anymore. But I kept the air pump. I figured, you know, one day I'll need that air pump. And uh hasn't happened. It's been probably 15 years, but it hasn't happened. But I have that air pump. But I know that there are a lot of those air pumps out there. I know there are a lot of people that would like to have uh, a, a windmill that pumps air into the pond to keep it fresh. So I thought I'd take a few minutes today and show you about the Coenders air pump. Most importantly, how to service it. Because they're extremely well made, but they don't last forever. And I thought I would take mine apart. Check it out on the inside, make sure it's working really well. There's a little special little one-way valve in there. I put it back together. So if you have a Coinders windmill with an air pump on it, and it's one of the older styles. They have a new style now, which has changed and tardy. I haven't seen one. This is the older style. I don't know how old that is, but a few years ago. If you have one or you would like one, or you can find one of the Coenders air pumps, like mine, you can connect this air pump to any. You don't have to have a Coenders windmill. You can connect it to any windmill. You can connect it to my old-fashioned windmill. I'll show you how that happens in just a minute. But let me show you very quickly what these air pumps look like. Now, this is the air pump. This is actually a Coenders air pump. So maybe you've seen one of these at the flea market and wondering what the heck it is. Well, that's what it is. It's, it's a straight tube, steel tube. It has a fitting in there. And then it has this interesting uh, end on it, this wide end on it here, with a standard one-quarter MPT fitting coming out. Well, if you look at it closely, you'll see that this is a concave uh, a cup, and this is a concave cup, and sandwiched between those two is a rubber diaphragm. I'm going to show that to you in just a minute. Now, if you have one of these, or would like one of these, or need to fix one of these, it's really, really very simple. That The two concave plates are fastened together with eight screws. And I'm, I already took these apart, so eight nuts and bolts and screws. You can see them all the way around. And that squeezes the diaphragm. So I've taken the eight uh, nuts and bolts out. 
I'll take our eighth one. And now you can see that this comes apart. Now, <clears throat> I've already serviced this, okay? I just did it a few minutes ago. So, so when I first took this apart, it didn't pop off like that. No, 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 no. It's been, it's been sandwiched in there tightly for a long time. So the rubber diaphragm, you can see it here, it was sticking to the metal, both sides, and I had to pry it apart. You don't need many tools to do this. Wrench the screwdriver, but I also used a, a cold chisel, a good cold chisel, and very, very carefully tapped it down in between there until I was able to pop this top off. And you can see that this top, we'll call it the top, this top is exactly that. The top is just a concave piece of metal eight holes around the outside and it has a, a, a one quarter NPT standard water type fitting in there. Now, underneath that of course is your diaphragm. Here's here's your actual diaphragm. Right here. You see? Rubber diaphragm. Rubber diaphragm. Made of rubber, just like that. Fastens around. And that rubber diaphragm is attached to a rod like this, just to a metal rod. And it has a, a one, I think it's half inch, <clears throat> looks like it's half inch the threaded, standard threaded uh, uh, um, hole in the end of it. So you can connect this to the windmill, whatever is going to power it. And then you have, of course, you got a, the other half of, of the concave bucket. And that, they just go together with the diaphragm. There's a hole right through there. You see that big hole goes right through. So it's really very simple. Let me explain quickly, just for one, briefly, for one second, how it works. It's really very simple. You connect this to something that goes up and down. So this goes up and down. Inside, the, inside here, of course, it goes down. And when it goes down, it draws air in. Then when it goes back up, it pushes the air out through that hole. So it draws air in, pushes air out. Just that simple. Up and down, up and down. And and you're, you're going to ask the usual question, well, if it sucks the air in, why doesn't it push the air back out? Well, because right there, there's a little one-way valve. And that little one-way valve was held in there, let me show it to you, by three bolts, and then there's a metal plate, pops off, and there's your little one-way valve. Okay, and there's the actual diaphragm there. And there's the thing it's fastened to. So how does that work? Well, this one-way valve, you can see, sits over a hole. And that hole just comes out here and, and opens up into that long tube. It's just open to the atmosphere. So when the diaphragm, and it's a little spring-loaded one-way valve. Okay, so when the diaphragm goes down like this, it pushes any air in behind the diaphragm is pushed out. It's pushed out in, into the uh, into the uh, tube here. When it, when it goes back up, when it sucks back up, the little one-way valve, spring loaded one-way valve, closes off. So the diaphragm is compressed down, it's got a bunch of air above it, so now the diaphragm is pushed back up, one-way valve is closed, and the air that's in there has to go up, it can only go one way, it can only go up, out through this pipe fitting. The back down, sucks more in, and pushes it up. So the one-way valve prevents the air inside this mechanism from going out again, it, it, it won't even go one way. Sucks it in, pushes it out. Sucks it in, pushes it out. Sucks it in, pushes it out. Now this you can also take apart and clean. But these are very cheap, you can actually still got these blenders, a little rubber valve in there with a spring on it, but they come apart, they're screwed, unscrew those, clean it, put it back in. So here's what I did. I got mine all apart, and a little bit of corrosion, a bit of rust, been sitting around for a long time, and of course it had been wet. You're not supposed to go water in the inside mechanism. That's why this long tube is here, and why it hangs down fairly long. You always mount it this way. When any rain or snow it lands on top, it doesn't go up into the tube and ruin the mechanism, you see? So it's pretty straightforward. But I cleaned it all up. It just took, uh, took me a bit of time. Uh, uh, um, some uh, rust remover. This is galvanized. This wasn't. This was rusty. And uh, a lot of steel wool. A little bit of hard work. And I now have this thing looking just like new. So, once again, just quickly, Put that together, one way valve there, three bolts, hold that on top. Oops, maybe we should put the rod in, huh? I know the rod won't move. The rod in like so. Diaphragm, one way valve on top, cap, eight nuts and bolts, and there you go. Air pump, just that simple. If you pull down on this rod, the diaphragm goes down, sucks air in, up through the one way valve, through the tube, then you push up. On this rod down here, the one way valve closes, the air is trapped in there, and it forces that air out. Now, it's surprising, you can actually get quite a bit of pressure with this. It's a big diaphragm, so there's a good volume of air, which is what you really want. You want a lot of air, a big volume of air rushing down with the bonds, so it blows out really well. But you need to have some pressure, too. And these are actually pretty uh, pretty amazing. You'll actually build up pressure. 
because of that one way valve, it can only go one way, so it forces the air out, forces the air out, and as it forces the air out into the, into the tube, running down to your pond, the pressure builds up and builds up. It's just that simple. That's how it works. So what's the tricky part? Well, the tricky part is this. This only has about a three inch movement. It only has to move about three inches. It goes down about an inch and a half or so, it goes up an inch and a half, down and then back up, up and down, and about an inch and a half. So if you have anything around your property that has about a three inch stroke on it, you can simply fasten this to the side of whatever that is that you have with a couple of muffler clamps, run a rod to it. Let's say you had a piece of one inch square uh, uh, tubing. You can run a rod to the bottom of that, connect this to whatever going up and down like that. And all you have to do then is, is get the right stroke at that end. And that's not difficult at all. I'll show you that. So there you go. If you have a coenders pump, they're really very, very simple. If yours isn't working or it's not pumping air the way it used to, take it apart. It's only a half hour job. Clean it up, put it back together, and your pump is like new. Uh, if you if you don't have one and would like one, now you see how simple it is. I mean, it wouldn't be that hard to build it, but they're probably cheaper to buy one. Maybe you can buy a used one and then fix it up. Or you can maybe, I don't know if you can buy the pump alone from Coinders. Maybe you can. So anyway, so my wife, a little while ago, she says to me, Diana says to me, why don't we have this hooked up for our ponds? We have one, two, three, four, five ponds here, right? Five ponds? And she says, why don't we hook it up? We have a nice pond at the front of the property where you first come in. It looks, it looks kind of pretty. And there's fish in there and turtles and other junk. We don't use it really, but it looks pretty. She says, why don't we hook it up to our pond? Make it look really pretty. Well, first of all, it's 500 feet away. Not impossible, but the, the line should really be underground so it's protected, not being stomped on by the horses and kicked around and everything else. And, and it's a long way to go. So I've never, ever hooked this up, but I could. And if you had a windmill, you know, an old-fashioned windmill or a new windmill or anything at all with a stroke on it, a vertical stroke on it, you could use one of these, okay? Here's the trick, just a little bit of math. How do you get a three inch stroke? Well, it's really very simple. Measure the stroke of your device. My windmill, my old fashioned 100 year old BD pumper out here, which you've seen on my, on my videos, is has a six inch stroke, okay? Six inch stroke. So I can't hook this directly to the windmill. I wouldn't break this in, in minutes. The windmill is extremely strong, and even though this is well built. Six inches would rip the diaphragm apart in no time at all. So what I would have to do is somehow make that six inch stroke into a three inch stroke. How you do that is really very simple. If you have a, a, a piece of metal, doesn't get something pretty strong. This is one inch uh, tubing, steel tubing. Then measure the length of it. Find the dead center. Now, if you know anything about math, you should know that if, 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 if it's in dead center, let's say you put a hole through there and put a bolt right there so it pivots at that point. Okay. Now, if you bring this end down six inches, that end goes up six inches. It's just that simple. Right? Trust me. And you can go measure if you want, but get a, get a ruler and check it out if you don't believe me. <laughs> anyway, it's just that simple. If this goes down six inches, that goes up six inches. If this goes up six inches, you see? So there's your six inch stroke. I don't know what a three inch stroke. So what do you do? Well, if it's a six, six inch stroke right at the middle, then at the quarter, Right here, if I put a bolt through here, put a hole through here, connect this to the windmill, the windmill goes up and down six inches, that end only goes up and down three inches. So it's just a matter of playing around. If you have something, a windmill or any other device that has a stroke on it, you can then hook that device up to one of these coenders or similar type of air pumps, and you can get your three inch stroke and make it pump air all the way down to your pump. Keep your water fresh, it looks good. It's the same type of uh, device that they use in, 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 around harbors. Uh, you know, where boats and things are, uh, uh, to keep the water from freezing in the wintertime. This is bubbly, the air is bubbling all the time. It's like a current. So any reason for any need for that, that's how you would do it. And for you guys that have a coenters pump and uh, you, you, you wondered if it's working well and you want to take it apart, that's so easy. It is really the easiest thing in the world. A couple of wrenches, a couple of screwdrivers, you can take it apart, clean it all up, put it back together. It's like new. Anyway, don't know if there's anything in there of value to you. I hope there is. And it's been great talking to you anyway. Alec Pierce at the ranch. See you soon.